I don't think it's Megatron. I'm sure it's Google. <laughs> After reviewing the footage, they noticed that the coffee came specifically from Tequin and Diana whenever Charles mentioned the right answer after the four options. They were able to catch a total of 19 coughs, which came from his wife and Tequin, which signaled the correct answers. But What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do here, man. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, um, watching the video entirely, commenting, Hitting that post notification bell, man, and especially hitting that like button on each and every video, man. You guys are helping us push us into the algorithm, man. So I greatly appreciate the support. Found this video for you guys today. Let's see what we do best, Seekers. Let's seek the truth. This story truly infuriates me. This woman was forced to marry this man, and only a few weeks later, she was found murdered. This is about 20-year-old Rukia Hadari, who moved from Afghanistan to Australia with her family at a very young age. In 2019, Rukia was forced by her mother to marry 25-year-old Muhammad Ali only two weeks after her mom introduced them. Leading up to the wedding day in November, Rukia was going around telling her friends, teachers, and counselors that she did not want to go through with the wedding but had no choice because her mom told her that she had to do it before their wedding day rukia and mohammed had only seen each other a few times and during the ceremony it's clear that she does not look happy or excited at all after their ceremony rukia moved across the country to live with mohammed leaving her friends and family behind and things quickly took a turn only six weeks after their wedding rukia's life was savagely taken by mohammed after he got upset said that she was not cooking or cleaning for him. He even took this video moments before he took her life and sent it to her family to try to embarrass her. Mohammed slit her throat with a kitchen knife and then he called her brother to let him know what he did and then he turned himself in. But here's the twist. Not only was Mohammed charged with murder and sentenced to life in prison, Rukia's mother was also found guilty and was the first person in Australia to be convicted of causing a person to enter into a forced marriage. This picture mm. famously surfaced from 1941 because something looks very off about it. This guy, a lot of people cite this picture as proof of time travel because not only does he seemingly look very modern and out of place, but he also appears to be holding a camera that's very small, too small for any commercial grade camera of 1941. But let me explain why this is debunked. The modern t-shirt he's wearing, it's a logo for the Montreal Maroons, which was a hockey team from the 40s. The glasses mm. were also available, they had protective side shields in the 40s too. But what about that camera? It's small enough to be a digital camera, but they did not have commercial grade cameras that were this small in the 40s. Incorrect. Kodak confirmed of a rare model of a small portable camera that was limited, but it was available by 1941, which makes this photo completely plausible. Damn, debunked time travel just like that. So I'm obsessed with the dark side of Disney. And did you know there's a horrible period of accidents at Disneyland that doesn't really get talked about a lot? It's been referred to as the Disney Dark Ages. Mm. It was from 1997 to 2003 when this guy, Paul Pressler, was the president of Disneyland. Paul basically decided they were no longer going to do scheduled maintenance on rides. They were only going to fix rides when they were broken. Did it save money? Sure. But this resulted in some of the worst accidents the park had ever seen. One of the worst being that of Brandon Zucker. In 2001, Brandon Zucker was on the Roger Rabbit ride, which was already having maintenance issues. An employee put Brandon on the wrong side of the car, and when he put the lap band down, it didn't close all the way. So at one point in the ride, Brandon tumbled out of his seat and was hit by an oncoming car. The car pinned him and dragged him down the track before anyone could do anything. Mm. Also, at the time, Disney employees were not allowed to call 911. They had to call park emergency services, mm. who then called 911. So it took a while for anyone to come get Brandon. He did survive the accident, but he had brain damage so bad he was nonverbal and lost a lot of motor skills for the rest of his life. And eventually he passed away at 13 years old. The FBI suspects a serial Man, killer works as a trucker to find victims and then dispose of their bodies across state lines to confuse police. And that's what they think happened to Tammy Jo Zawicki. This college student was driving from Evanston, Indiana to Grinnell, Iowa when her car broke down in Illinois. Yet her body was found nine days later across I-44 in Missouri. 
She was last seen on August 23, 1992, standing near her broken down car at mile marker 83 on I-80. And there was a semi-truck with a rusty orange stripe parked near her car. It seemed like he was trying to help her, but the FBI thinks he was waiting to grab her. Tammy's body was found on a rural stretch of I-44 in southwestern Missouri. She was wrapped in a red blanket and surrounded by duct tape. She'd been stabbed once in the arm and seven times in a circle around her heart. According to the FBI, she'd also been essayed. Witnesses describe the driver of the tractor trailer being a white male, 35 to 40, 6 feet tall, and with bushy dark hair. The trucker she was last seen alive with has not been identified. Illinois investigators think this could be a trucker by the name of Lonnie Beardrod. Mm. He matched the description at the time and his trailer home is near where her body was found. And Tammy's body was found wrapped in a blanket with the Kenworth logo and Lonnie drove a Kenworth truck. But to be fair, Kenworth is a large manufacturer. Lonnie Beardrod died, but he isn't the only suspect. Because of the interstate connection, this person could be from almost anywhere. Several other serial killers' names have been brought up in connection to Tammy's case, but as of right now, it's unsolved. Let me know if you want to hear more about highway serial killers and their possible victims. And follow if you like true crime. Sick world we in, man. I have no freaking suspects because like I said, the highway is so vast, they can come from anywhere. Danger looks around every corner nowadays, you have to be careful. Edit. Call them on like, like we see it, man. If it got spiny edits, comment Agent down below. Discoveries, part two. After a Chinese construction company caused a reservoir to sink 10 feet, a 600-year-old Buddha carving was uncovered. Underwater archaeologists even found evidence of an ancient temple beneath the 12-foot statue. Mm. This ancient sapphire ring is believed to have belonged to Caligula, the third emperor of Rome. It includes an engraved portrait of his fourth and final wife, Sasonia. Here's the before and after of an ancient Greek stadium found in modern-day Turkey. It was built around the 1st century AD and once held a capacity of 30,000 people. The Orkney Hood was found in a Scottish peat bog in 1867. Despite its immaculate condition, the garment is around 1,500 years old. 1,600-year-old sling bullets from ancient Rome have been found with the words, Take That, inscribed on them. Often considered the Sistine Chapel of Ancient Egypt, this is the 3200-year-old tomb of Queen Nefertari. The paintings are said to be the best preserved and most detailed decorations of any Egyptian burial site by far. This woman wow. was caught putting a roundup in her husband's Mountain Dew. This man from Missouri went to police after his home surveillance camera caught his wife, 47-year-old Michelle Peters, pouring Roundup, which is a chemical weed killer, into his favorite drink. He became a little suspicious in the beginning of May when he noticed that his Mountain Dew was tasting a little off. Mm. At first, he ignored the strange taste and continued to drink it, but a couple of weeks later, he began vomiting and having a sore throat. Then on June 12, he reviewed surveillance footage in his garage where he kept his Mountain Dew in a fridge. And it shows his wife pouring the Roundup straight into the Mountain Dew bottle. Around that same time, he had told her that he was feeling sick and all she said was that he probably had COVID and to stay away from the grandkids. Eventually, he went to police and Michelle was arrested and at first, her defense was that she mixed the Mountain Dew with the Roundup because she wanted to create this strong weed killer and she had seen this on Pinterest. But eventually, she admitted to everything and she said she did it because she was mad at her husband for being unappreciative after she threw him a 50th birthday party. She then expressed that she regretted it and she should have just divorced him. She was charged with first degree domestic assault and armed criminal action. Imagine if you Man, if y'all just in a relationship and it ain't working, this split up. Don't go to the extreme. <laughs> like what she did, man. Caught her on 4K as well. Pouring that in his mountain dew. People, man. It's like when they get upset, it makes them do the most craziest and bizarre things, man. Um, viewing these clips together with you guys, Seekers. Blows my mind every time. Grandparents just disappeared, like completely without a trace. Welcome to Creep Time on TikTok with Silas Dean. This is the haunting story of Charles and Catherine. On April 8th of 1980, a wealthy elderly couple named Charles and Catherine check into a Holiday Inn right off I-95. They're just on their way home from a vacation. But to put this in context, this wasn't a usual choice for them. These were two very well-off people, so to choose a Holiday Inn, it wouldn't have been typical of them. Mm. But not long after checking into their room, the couple seemingly 
vanished. After two or three days, hotel management became concerned that they hadn't seen the couple leave their room, so they went to go check on them. This was only to find that their room had never been slept in. Inside the room were all of their clothes, their travel diary, and over $60,000 of Catherine's jewelry. Hotel staff then goes out to the parking lot and finds that their car is missing, but no one ever saw them leave. At the time, only one witness comes forward saying that they saw this car miles away at a restaurant circuit. But after the interview people at the restaurant, nobody remembered seeing this couple. Despite mm. search efforts, they were never found after that night, and no one really knows what happened to them. What the hell happened to the Romers, man? Is vanished? In 1988, the entire classroom of students disappeared. Today, 40 years later, an elderly woman recounted the chilling truth. Sophie Reed arrived at the police station claiming she knew the truth behind the disappearance of an entire classroom of students in 1988. Mm. The police were astonished because this mystery had haunted the country for 40 years. Sophie began her account. It was a clear Tuesday in April 1988 when Mr. Hemington led his students into the woods for a geography lesson. Suddenly, at three o'clock as the bell chimed, Mr. Hemington and the children mysteriously vanished. The principal immediately alerted the police, and more officers and parents joined the search, but they found no trace of them. This event gradually evolved into an inexplicable mystery, becoming an unsolvable nightmare. Sophie then revealed a startling secret that left the police present in shock. Police officers thought that crimes like this only happened in movies. In the next part, I will show the interview with the missing teacher. So press the plus button and comment, teacher, for more details in part two. Damn, well, we're gonna have to find out part two for you guys, seekers. We gotta figure out what happened to that the missing of those kids. Man, what do you guys think happened? Let's talk about this couple who cheated on the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and thought they got away with it. You just want one million! This all happened in 2001 when Charles Ingram mm. was a contestant on the show while his wife Diana and a man named Teflon Wickock were in the audience helping him cheat the entire time. So how exactly did they notice that Charles was cheating? Well, throughout the entire show, the sound technician noticed a loud coughing coming from the audience at specific times after Charles spoke. I don't think it's an all. Megatron, mega, 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 yeah. I don't think it's Megatron. I'm sure it's Google. <laughs> After oh, reviewing okay. the footage, they noticed that the coffee came specifically from Tequin and Diana whenever Charles mentioned the right answer after the four options. They were able to catch a total of 19 coughs, which came from his wife and Tequin, which signaled the correct answers. But oh, not wow. only that, Charles' strategy throughout the game was very odd because he would state the four options out loud and it was clear that he didn't know the answer, but somehow he always got it right. Then what producers found strange was that after Charles got every question right and won one million pounds, he was seen arguing with his wife backstage. Mm. At the time Charles left the set, they began investigating and they did not hand over the money to him. All three of them were found guilty of conspiring to cheat, but till this day they've maintained their innocence and Tequin still argues that his coughing was because he had allergies and it was all a coincidence. Ultimately, if Charles didn't cheat, he would have only won a thousand pounds that night. This is a good reminder to he got caught in 4K, bro. Cheating. At a game show like that, man, you know this camera's like probably angled everywhere, so there's no way you can get away with, with cheating like that. It's too much evidence. That's insane. To double check every single nook and cranny in your house. Because in 2019, this couple came home after a week long vacation to see that there was a stranger living in their home. And he had most likely been living there while they were also in the house. Mm. Also, if you like these kinds of stories, you'll like tonight's episode. Upon arriving home after a week away, Josh Campbell tried the front door of his house, but there was a stranger on the inside pulling it closed. That stranger was 26 year old Ezekiel Zayas. And yes, this is a video he left on their personal computers. 
The two were able to call the police and eventually get him out of the house, but that's when they saw all of the terrifying stuff he had been up to in the home. Oh. He also left them videos on their computers that included incredibly personal information that they had only shared with each other, meaning that he had been listening to their conversations. But the worst part was the knives. Ezekiel had left notes in the house about surgeries that he wanted to perform on the family, like a hand transplant. And when the couple went into their bedroom, they saw that there were knives and other utensils all around the bed. It seemed like he was preparing to do some sort of operation on them. Frogging stories are absolutely terrifying, and I don't want to give too much away, but you might be spooked by tonight's episode. Do you ever see a picture that That's just insane. makes your stomach drop? This is a still from an alert that a woman named Alexis Randall got on her phone. It's from a security camera that was set up in her living room, but she's looking at this, and she's thinking the same thing you are. She's like, what's wrong with the picture here? Why did the motion detector go off? But then look a bit closer, specifically at the bathroom door. This man was staring at the camera from the door. She spots this picture and she immediately panics and calls the police, but by the time they get there, this guy is gone. What really freaked her out even more is that when police got there, they found evidence that the bathroom window had been tampered with. Further security footage would show that the man had crawled through the bathroom window the night before and was hiding in the hallway bathroom all through the night, even while she was in the house. And if you guys are loving creep time, make sure to go follow on Insta. How the hell? And nobody called him, man. He was just standing there the whole time. How do people begin to the, to these houses, and we don't be noticing, man? This is one of the most terrifying urban legends I've ever heard, and it ended up being true. But in Canada, there was this legend that one night a bunch of people saw a bright blue light in the sky, and the next day, an entire village of people disappeared. But it turns out that legend is rooted in something that really happened. This is coming from this week's episode. I have a whole series on urban legends that ended up being true, and it's a very scary listen. Mm. So in Canada in 1930, a fur trapper named Joe LaBelle was riding in the river in his canoe when he came to a village he had seen before. Except this time when he came upon it, it looked like everyone had left in a hurry. Food was still cooking, and a bunch of dogs were barking and super hungry as if they had been left behind. But the strangest part of all of this was in the middle of the community, there was a grave that had been disturbed. And that reminded the fur trapper of a very scary story he had heard. The legend of the torn rack, which was this demon that supposedly stalked the area. So he starts looking for someone who might know what happened to these people. They were a nomadic people. It didn't make any sense that they would have left all of their stuff behind. Mm -hmm. And that's when he finds a man in a hospital who was potentially part of the village. The man is so freaked out. He won't say anything at first, but eventually Joe gets him to talk. And he recognizes one word that the man says. Torn rack, the name of the evil deity that was potentially in the area. The police basically don't believe any of this, but they do acknowledge that before the disappearance, they did see blue lights in the sky that no one has been able to figure out what they were. I get more into the theories of what may have happened in this episode, and I also talk a little bit more about other urban legends that ended up being true. Hmm, what the hell? What were those blue lights, man? They can't explain it. So that's be some truth to what the um, villagers said, right? Terrifying Cursed Objects That Will Haunt Your Dreams, Part 1, Robert the Doll. According to legend, in the early 1900s, a wealthy American family known as the Autos committed an unspeakable offense against their young maid from the Bahamas. In an act of retaliation, the maid gifted the young auto boy, Eugene, a doll named Robert, which had been cursed by a voodoo priestess. In the following years, Eugene would become uncomfortably close to the doll, speaking to it as if it were a real person, and becoming violently angry with anyone who looked at it without his permission claiming that they were being disrespectful to Robert. In addition, most of the Otto family friends stopped visiting, claiming to have seen the doll move by itself, or having heard it giggling late at night. Eventually, the Otto family sent the doll to a museum to get rid of it, where it remains to this day. Thousands of people have attributed tragedies that have occurred in their life to having visited Robert the doll, and it is said that if you view it without its permission, misfortune will find you as well. Tag a friend to pass the curse along and follow for more. Yeah, I believe Robert the doll. Is that curse real? Do you know, or did you know a young lady by the name of Diane Ruiz? Yes, that was my mom. And is there anything that you would like for the jury to consider uh, here today as it relates to this matter? 
a Byzantine emperor as his overlord and even tried to give away his crown to the newly come crusader, Count Philip of Flanders. But when Philip refused and marched north with his army, the leper king was left to deal with Saladin on his own. But after the 16-year-old mm. king marched out and defeated the sultan's forces at the Battle of Moncasard, all attention turned to who would win the hand of his beautiful sister and inherit the kingdom, leading to bitter infighting among the crusaders. Now with Saladin similarly seeking to consolidate his control over Muslim Syria, the two great enemies agreed to a two-year truce. So the sultan secretly sent letters to the Abbasid Caliph promising to unite all Islam and drive the crusaders from the Holy Land. Good. Yet after the truce was broken early by a raid from the king's vassal Reynal in 1182, the king ordered him to return all his prisoners, but refused. And so Saladin marched on the kingdom of Jerusalem with a fresh army. While at the same time in Constantinople, the pro-crusader Byzantine emperor was overthrown, and all the city's Latin inhabitants were slain. Yet now all on his own, outnumbered and so sick he had to be carried into battle, the leper king marched out and defeated the great Saladin's forces once again. But only one year later he became unable to blink and grew blind. And now in his deathbed had no choice but to appoint his sister's husband Guy as his regent. And although Guy was able to hold off another invasion by Saladin, he missed a crucial moment to destroy the enemy army completely, and the Sultan was once again allowed to escape. Now filled with fury, the king made a miraculous partial recovery and took command once again. And when Saladin descended upon the castle of Karak, the leper king led out his troops while being carried in a litter and saved his kingdom one last time. But shortly after turning 24, mm. the great king passed away. And with his sister's husband Guy now back on the throne, Saladin marched 40,000 men against 20,000 crusaders at the Battle of Hattin and utterly annihilated their army, pillaging the kingdom and capturing the holy capital of Jerusalem. And despite the best efforts of Richard the Lionheart and later crusaders, the kingdom of Jerusalem would never again regain its former glory. When you're the only man who could have saved the Crusader States from the sword of Saladin, they don't just call you the Leper King. They call you King Baldwin IV. Thanks to a deathbed oh. confession, Damn. a nearly 24-year-old cold case was closed this week when the bodies of a missing girl and her mother were found. 10-year-old Natasha Alex Carter and her mother Susan disappeared from their home in Beckley, West Virginia in August 2000. But at first, police initially reported that Alex may have been abducted by her mother. In a press release from December 2021 about the case, the FBI Pittsburgh said, quote, At the time of their disappearance, Susan Carter and Alex's father were having a custody dispute and Alex moved in with her mother and mother's new husband, which mm. it's not confirmed that it was actually her mother's new husband, but they moved in, and then not long after that, Susan and Alex disappeared. But while it was initially suspected as a parental abduction by Susan, after the two remained missing, an investigation into other possibilities ensued. But unfortunately, the case went cold. In 2021, the FBI reopened the cold case and started looking into the man Susan and Alex were living with, Larry Webb. Searches of his home were done in 2022 and 2021, and they found a bullet embedded in the wall of what was Alex's bedroom. The bullet was tested for DNA, and it confirmed that blood on it belonged to Alex. In October 2023, Larry Webb was indicted on first-degree murder charges for Alex's death, despite Alex and Susan's bodies never being found. Due to his deteriorating health, though, Webb was not arrested until April 12, 2024, but since then, he was being held without bond. On Monday, he had a medical episode, after which, in a, quote, come to Jesus moment on his deathbed, he confessed to authorities what he had done. Webb claimed that on August 8th, 2000, he had gotten into an argument with Susan over money. He said he was missing some cash and believed that she had taken it and spent it. The argument escalated and he shot her, and then he ended up shooting Alex so there would be no witnesses. Webb then wrapped their bodies in bed linens and placed them in the basement that night. Over the next two nights, he dug a shallow grave in the woods on his property, eventually burying them in his clothes, and then walking free for the next 20 years. On April 22, 2024, Larry Webb died at Mount Olive Correctional Complex, and six hours later, Susan and Alex's remains were found at his property in Beckley. Unfortunately, now that Webb is dead, he cannot be charged in connection to their deaths. At least now they have been found and can be properly laid to rest. Alex's father, Rick Lafferty, said after the discovery, quote, It's kind of a sad day, but also a happy day because I can bring my baby home. Rest in peace, Alex and Susan. Mm, rest in peace. Insane, man. I always take somebody up to the end to finally confess what they did. Crazy case. Seekers, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, your true seeker seeking the truth. I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, guys, um, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, follow me on my social medias down below. Also, man, like I said, comment down in the video, even if you guys just to say hi, it helps um in the algorithm. So really appreciate the support. You guys can catch you in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace you too. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and keepy videos 
on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikToks, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the um, supporters, man, who's been subscribed to the channel, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. You're helping us grow our community, man, the seekers. So I really appreciate that support, man. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, man. Let's see the truth. This girl took her mom's life on Facebook Live. On January 8th of this year, 28-year-old Tenanzan Ors Beltran went with her mom, 55-year-old Olivia Lucia Beltran, to a Santa Rosa police station. Tenanzan needed to go there because she needed to pick up her vehicle after it was impounded following an earlier chase. Mm -hmm. While at the police station, she filmed herself waving an open pocket knife in front of everybody. An officer stated that she was too mentally unstable to drive, but they still let her go home. At 5 p.m. that same day, Tenanson was on Facebook Live when she stabbed her mother. Wow. Viewers of the live ended up contacting police to let them know what they had just witnessed. When officers arrived to the scene, they noticed that Tenanson was on her balcony holding a knife in her hand. Right next to her was her mother, and her clothes were just soaked in blood. Mm. Tenanson failed to respond to command, so a group of officers broke through the front door, and she was arrested. Olivia suffered from numerous stab wounds and was rushed to a local hospital. Unfortunately, the surgeons were unable to overcome the extensive life threatening injuries and she passed away. Detectives worked with Meta slash Facebook and had the video removed. Nansen was arrested on one count of murder and was being held without bail at Marin County Jail. To this day, there is still no clear motive on why she did this to her mother. This man Crazy will allow himself to be eaten alive by a cannibal. 43-year-old Armando Brands was an engineer from Berlin who always fantasized about being cannibalized by another human being. So, in 2001, he began searching the website Cannibal Cafe, which was, yes, a legitimate website for anyone willing to cook him and eat him. The on the Cannibal Cafe website, that Brands met 30-year-old computer technician Armin Muse. Armin also had a fantasy of cannibalizing human flesh, and so over the next few weeks, him and Brands messaged each other back mm. and forth, discussing the best way to cook Brands' flesh and then dispose of his body after they were done. Finally, on March 9, 2001, Armando traveled to Armin's apartment and willingly allowed himself to be tied up before Armin began to try and chew off Armando's penis. Armin found that the penis was too chewy to bite off, so he instead castrated Armando with a knife before frying his severed penis in olive oil and then feeding it to him. After this, Armin proceeded to kill Armando by stabbing him in the neck and letting him bleed out in the bathtub for over three hours before he finally succumbed to his wounds. After Armando died, Armin proceeded to cut up his body into large chunks, storing them in a freezer, and over the next six months, he would consume over 44 pounds of Armando's flesh. Armin would be caught six months later after looking for another victim on the Cannibal Cafe website. Now, at first, prosecutors weren't sure how to go about this case because Armando willingly allowed all this to happen, and they know this mm. because Armin recorded the entire thing, the castration, eating of the penis, and the entire time Armando was telling Armin that he wanted more. However, since people can't consent to their own murder, Armin was eventually found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. However, to this day, he still gets weekly visits out to the city where he can roam about and do as he pleases. How the hell can he let's get weekly roamings on a website like that, man, actually existed? Blow my damn mind, man. Nowadays, man, I shouldn't be surprised, but if you probably type anything on the web, it'll pop right back up, man. Stuff that shouldn't even be allowed, like cannibalism. Somebody want to be eaten online, and they found it just like that. It's internet, man. It gives you too much easy access to things we shouldn't have. Because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? I upset my plea. Exactly. As much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. Mm. You have done much to control those urges. The decision to assault was precise, calculated, manipulative, devious, despicable. Mm. I'm giving you 175 years 
which is 2100 months. I just signed your death warrant. Damn. I, I need everyone to be quiet. These villagers dig a wasn't, I, don't know, I think I remember seeing that case. Uh, wasn't he like already, but didn't he work with like the Olympic team or something like that? And how he had that many access, man, because he was like a sports coach or something. And he got what he deserved. She signed, like she said, she signed his death warrant, man. They were clock as they should have been, bro. Go their dead family members every three years, and you won't believe why. These people are from a village in Indonesia, and during the festival to get their ancestors corpses clean them then put them all out to dry and dress them in new clothes as a ritual mm -hmm. and the reason is because they believe they're showing them love and respect different cultures and different they do different things but it's kind of bizarre man could you guys do that i can't even think about doing that burying up digging up your loved ones the Legend of Bunny Man Bridge. Hmm. In 1904, not far from this bridge in Fairfax County, Virginia, was a mental asylum. Nearby residents didn't like the fact that mental patients were near their new homes, so they had it shut down. Hmm. While the patients were being transported, their bus crashed and all were found except for one. A patient named Douglas Griffin, who disappeared into the nearby woods. In the upcoming weeks, bodies of rabbits were found strewn about the woods woods as if someone was eating them. On Halloween night, Douglas Griffin struck and killed a group of teenagers that were hanging out underneath of the bridge. Mm. They were gutted and hanged like dead rabbits. Now there is a ton of variations mm. of this urban legend, but there is a slight bit of truth behind the origin of it. There was a police report from 1970 that said a person dressed in all white threw a hatchet at somebody's car. What? And the person had something on their heads. And that is where people filled in the blanks with it being rabbit ears. There was another report of a man running around with a hatchet in a bunny suit also in 1970. Who knows? Maybe there really was a really? killer bunny man. This man has been sentenced the to a bunny man would believe it? prison after doing the unthinkable to his daughter. Tony Valles is a 66-year-old from Helena. On the 10th of July, 2022, he was at home with his partner, Heather. Tony's eight-year-old daughter, Ariana, and his 18-year-old son were also at the house at the time. Suddenly, two women entered the property who he believed were evicting him. Mm -hmm. He flew into a violent rage and grabbed a weapon from his bedroom. At this point, he began shooting. He shot Heather and she fell to the floor, and then he shot at his son. His eight-year-old daughter tried to escape and run from the terror, but she was hit with gunfire. She was on the stairs when she was hit by a bullet and she fell back. She tragically died after being rushed to hospital. After his mm. daughter's death, Tony stated, I'm sorry for all this. I can't undo what I've done. The pain and the misery will last a lifetime and I'm sorry for all that. Tony was sentenced to serve 100 years in prison. This Very is the most unsettling thing. show I've seen. Disturbing things. Netflix just released a show called Baby Reindeer, where a man named Donnie is relentlessly stalked by a middle-aged woman named Martha. But it's based on a real story, and the guy it happened to is playing the main character. So mm. let's talk about the real events the show portrays. So in the show, Martha's obsession with Donnie starts after he offers a cup of tea for free. And according to the creator, that is is really what started her four-year obsession with him. Damn. Also, over the course of the stalking, the real Martha sent the creator 41,071 emails, what? 744 tweets, 46 Facebook messages, 106 pages of letters, and 350 hours of voicemail She messages. was dedicated. And the real texts and emails are featured in the show. One of the saddest real details of the show is that the creator does go to the police to try to report Martha, and they totally brush him off. They just don't feel like she's enough of a threat, even though she's showing up to all of his comedy shows she's sending him that many messages and she fully believes they're in a relationship mm. and the show is really interesting in that it portrays the gray area that the creator richard gadd faced while experiencing being stalked this is a bit of a spoiler but he himself was a survivor of sexual assault so in, in a way this kind of undying love was something that he craved and in interviews he's is that he's not purely a victim that this situation is really gray because sometimes he would indulge in the attention that she gave him mm. it's definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it already it does get very intense at times but let me know if you've seen it i've seen that school with your netflix a couple times i don't recommend it but i really didn't know what it was about but now that she it's broken down for us man
any fellow seekers they want to check it out man should i check it out you guys can leave a review might have to check that out edit call it like i see it his life was taken for last reacting to a facebook photo no way. this is 18 year old isaiah cray fitzgerald and he was from missouri on may 25th of 2023 isaiah had came across this photo of 20 year old tanner Watkins and his girlfriend mm -hmm. he reacts to the facebook photo with a laughing emoji tanner ends up responding to isaiah saying what's funny and an argument begins tanner then ends up telling isaiah that they should meet at the park to fight after a heated exchange an emoji? as he agreed upon location shots were fired from both vehicles Isaiah was fatally shot and his girlfriend was seriously wounded. Police have responded to the scene after receiving reports of gunfire and they stopped both vehicles as they were leaving. Isaiah was pronounced dead and his girlfriend was transported to a local hospital where doctors treated her injuries. Mm. Officers ended up confiscating weapons from both vehicles. Tanner and 18-year-old Caleb Ramsey were both taken into custody. Both pled not guilty to all charges and were acquitted in December what? of 2023. The judge had ordered a mistrial after the jury could not agree on a verdict. Tanner and Kayla were charged with three counts of murder, three counts of assault, unlawful use of a weapon, and four counts of armed criminal action. The most terrifying prisoners of all time. This is Jamie Osuna, the man with a thousand faces. In 2017, Jamie was sentenced to life in prison for the 2011 murder and torture of a woman from Bakersfield. During his court case, you can see him smirking, rolling his eyes, and mocking the family of the deceased, even giving a th thumbs up as the judge announces his sentence. From there, he is transported to Corcoran State Prison, where things got worse. Way worse. He is given a cellmate, Luis Romero, who had spent more than two decades in prison himself. On March 9th, 2019, guards check their cell and find the most gruesome scene. Romero had been beheaded and several of his body parts were removed and fashioned into a necklace worn by Jamie. Ha 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 had been written on the wall in blood as well as the man with a thousand faces. Someone that being dangerous, man, he had to be probably put into a solitary, like, as soon as he got there, man, because obviously doing the case you show, saying they were showing no remorse, man, putting a thumbs up during the trial, and telling him, man, those are the most dangerous people, man, who can do an action like that and have no remorse. And look what happened. Man, a thousand faces, man. Crazy. How about blood or something like the Joker would do? Prosecutors in the Brian Koberger case have said that they are not buying his alibi. Koberger's defense has spent months giving very few details about his alibi, essentially only saying that he was out driving around the night of the murders and mm -hmm. that nobody could corroborate this. But then a couple weeks ago, they said that they have an expert witness that can testify about Koberger's cell phone movements the night of the murders, placing him away from the house. But prosecutors are not buying it. And specifically, they said, quote, the defendant's alibi lacks specificity and state the specific place or places mm. at which the defendant claims to have been at the time of the alleged offense and the names and addresses of the witnesses upon whom he intends to rely to establish such alibi, according to Idaho okay. Code 19-519. So essentially, the prosecution is saying that, that Koberger's alibi is not specific enough and just because an expert witness can testify about his cell phone movement this does not mean that it's a corroborating alibi and that they need specific witnesses to be able to verify his alibi for it to be a proper alibi the next hearing for the case has been scheduled for may 2nd other updates in the coburger case include that prosecutors are also moving to have the following hearing after the may 2nd hearing mm. on may 14th be under seal this is essentially to protect the information that is being disseminated to the public that could potentially taint the jury pool okay. and speaking of the potential jury pool the judge has ruled that the defense can continue their surveys of the potential jury pool to determine 
if the potential jury pool knows about Brian Koberger because the defense is trying to get a change of venue. But that's mm. all for the latest updates with Brian Koberger. Things are just continuing to slowly move along. The longest prison yeah, sentence just in that case. At number five is Joseph Legend. He has served 67 years and 54 days in prison, and he was released earlier this year. He was mm. convicted of murder at the age of 15. Damn. He was released at 83. At number four is Joseph Phillips, who served 68 years and 236 days. Ooh. He was convicted in 1952 of raping a five-year-old girl. He was paroled in March 2021. Third with only nine more days in prison is Paul Goodell Jr. He served 68 years and 245 days. He was incarcerated in 1911 at the age of 17. He was released in 1980 at the age of 86. Once released, he died in a retirement home seven years later at the age of 93. Oh, in second no. place, and the only non-American on the list, is an Australian man by the name of Charles Fawcett. He was sentenced to life imprisonment after murdering an elderly man and stealing his boots. And before number one, right, I'll go to prison next in the comments and leave your autocorrect finished. He'll write that you'll go to jail. And in number one, it's okay. Francis Clifford Smith. He's currently serving 72 years and 90 days. He was also sentenced to death for the murder of a night watchman on his way out of a nightclub. But his sentence was changed to life imprisonment in 1954, two hours before his scheduled execution. He was lucky. Change just like that. All that time, gone. Basically, if you get over 50, 60 years, that's, that's a life sentence, man. As long as you get out, all that time's wasted, man. Thank you for your ask. Signs of a societal collapse in a country are so often things you would never even think about. For example, a shocking study was recently published showing a concerning rise in people being found so long after death in the UK that their oh. body had decomposed. And we're not talking about just days and weeks here. Yeah. The study cited a number of cases like 38-year-old Laura Winner, who struggled with mental health problems and was found in a mummified, almost skeletal state at her flat in 2021. More than three years after she had died. She passed away in 2017, three years before the pandemic even began, mm. the body of another 61-year-old woman, Shalia, was found badly decomposed in her flat in London in 2022, two years after she had died. The study said that men were more than twice as likely as women to be discovered long after her death in a decomposed state, and also linked this tragic trend to loneliness, societal breakdown, and a loss of people's social connection. And that is sadly why... A 20-year-old cold case has had a major Crazy. breakthrough after an eerie twist led to police identifying a teenage girl's remains. Midtown Jane Doe was found mysteriously entombed in cement in a former New York hotspot during construction in 2003. Mm. Investigators believe she was fatally strangled bound with electrical wire and wrapped in a carpet before being cemented into the building's basement. Now, Midtown Jane Doe has been identified as Patricia Kathleen McGlone, a girl from Brooklyn who was last seen in the late 1960s. DNA from a woman killed in the 9-11 attacks, also named Patricia, helped authorities identify the girl as the two were related. Who are some facts you... They both had the name Patricia, man, and that link is what led to that case breaking all those years ago. The things that we can line up in the universe in order for that to happen. This is crazy if you think about it. You didn't know, part 262. On August 17th of 1980, nine-week-old Azaria Chamberlain disappeared from the tent during a family camping trip. Mm -hmm. Mother Lindy reported she saw a wild dog leaving the tent and believed that her baby had been taken by dingoes in the Australian outback. Despite a frantic search, Nothing was found and no body was ever discovered. Extensive press coverage of the incident portrayed the couple as monsters and they received multiple death threats. Mm. Believing that the police were feeding information to the media, the entire court case was a madhouse and the public opinion hugely divided. Some believing they murdered their own child, others believing that dingoes really did take their baby. 
their religious backgrounds stirred up rumors that cult-like activity had taken place, and at the time, dingoes were not generally seen as dangerous. But despite all the horrible and negative publicity, Lindy and husband Michael continued to plead their innocence. Mm -hmm. But on October 29th of 1982, she was sentenced to life in prison for murder, with Michael being charged as an accessory and Damn. sentenced to 18 months. After she spent four long years in prison and had no more legal roots to take, new evidence was discovered. Ooh. Azaria's jacket was found partially buried in a highly populated dingo area. This led to her prison release in 1988 and both her and Michael were completely exonerated of all charges. In 2012, a coroner issued the final report on the case confirming that their baby had been taken and eaten by dingoes. So she was right all along, man. It goes to show you how sometimes like public opinion it's a powerful thing, man, if you, cause if you get the public on your side, it can get people to believe anything, even if it's untrue. Scary times we live in. Breaking news, the remains of six women have been found inside of a man's apartment. Authorities say the investigation began when he allegedly broke into a neighbor's apartment on April 16th. Mm -hmm. From there, he essayed and strangled a 17-year-old girl. The victim's mother returned home shortly after and saw the man leaving. It was at that point he slashed her throat and then fled. According to authorities, the mother was able to survive, however, the daughter did not. With the mother's assistance, they were able to identify the suspect only as, quote, Miguel. After the incident, they searched his apartment and, quote, clearly indicated we are looking at a possible serial killer of women. Authorities also confirmed that notebooks were located that, quote, may well be narrations of the acts that Miguel carried out against his victims. Mm -hmm. In addition, they found cell phones and ID cards belonging to multiple women. They said that five of the ID cards found belonged to women who have been located alive. However, they did not specify how many belonged to women who are still missing or deceased. Prosecutors did confirm that there were remains of six women found in his rented room. Quote, other biological material was also found in the rooms. In addition to the ID cards and cell phones found, they also found bones, B-L-O-O-D, and a saw. At this time, authorities have not provided any further details. To stay up to date on this case, make sure you click the playlist below. What do you guys think? Drop in the comments. Dark this is where a we live, man. the gay dating app Grindr to find victims so he could eat them. So on Christmas Eve 2019, 25-year-old Kevin Bacon told his roommate that he was going out for the evening to meet up with a man that he had recently been talking to on the dating app Grindr. Now, after three days, Kevin failed to come home or contact any of his friends or family, and they started to get worried, and they eventually went to the police to issue a missing person warning. Yeah, Later on the day that he was reported missing, Kevin's car was actually found abandoned in a parking lot, along with all of his clothes and his cell phone. Using his cell phone, police were able to actually access his Grindr account and see that the last person he had messaged on there was a man named Mark Lutunsky. Police were able to track down Mark Lutunsky, and they asked him if they could look around his house for a bit, and he actually happily agreed. However, when police went down to the basement, they made an absolutely horrific discovery. Mm -hmm. Hanging from the rafters by his ankles was the nude body of Kevin Bacon. His throat had been slashed, his body had been drained of blood, and most shocking of all, he had actually been castrated. Upon further questioning, Mark happily admitted that he had actually castrated Kevin and then brought up his testicles and ate them, and that he was planning to use a food dehydrator on the rest of Kevin's body so he could preserve it and eat it later. After Mark was arrested for the death of Kevin, police actually discovered that he had had several previous run-ins with the law in the months leading up to the death. Two men on two previous occasions actually called 911 stating that they had escaped from Mark's basement after he drugged them, tied them up, and was planning to torture them. In both cases, police just chalked up to a gay dispute, and they didn't actually look further into it. Mark was quickly found guilty of Kevin's death, and now he's currently serving life in prison. This man vanished from the top man. of a mountain in New York and was found six days later in California with no memory how he got there. Hmm? This is easily one of the most bizarre disappearances and reappearances that I've ever heard of. If you've never heard of this story before, buckle up because it's... It's wild. 49-year-old Canadian firefighter Danny it was skiing at White Base Mountain in New York when he vanished. It was the last day of their ski trip. All of Danny's friends had gotten tired and had headed back down to the ski lodge to wait for Danny, who wanted to do one more trip down the mountain, but mm -hmm. Danny never returned. Danny was missing on top of the highest mountains in the area. Everyone's thinking that there must have been some kind of terrible accident. All of Danny's belongings are still 
back at his resort, his car, his passport, his ID, his phone. A huge manhunt was being done on the mountain, but as the days went by, the chances of finding Danny alive were slim. Then, six days after he vanished, Danny was found alive on the complete other side of the country, over 2,500 miles away in California. Danny was still wearing the ski outfit that he disappeared in six days earlier with a new haircut, a new cell phone, and no memory of the past six days. Eventually, Danny was able to recall that he believes that he was the passenger in a big rig truck at one of those points and thought that he must have suffered some kind of head injury. Mm. But he had an examination at a hospital that found that he had zero injuries at all. Extensive investigations were done in both California and New York that brought forth no answers. Six months after Danny disappeared, he was able to recall a couple more big, big details, but honestly, it wasn't much. Now, here are some of the most highly believed theories that you can find online. Okay. Could Danny have got a concussion on the mountain that resulted in some kind of memory loss? It sounds plausible, but a lot of doctors that have looked at this case have said that it's unlikely because memory loss after head trauma usually only lasts at most 48 hours, not mm. six days. And apparently Danny didn't even have any injuries to begin with when he was found. Some also believe that maybe Danny was abducted by aliens who dropped him back off on the wrong side of the country. Some people also believe that maybe Danny wanted to disappear on purpose and start a new life, but then got cold feet. Honestly, I have no idea what I think happened. This story for real sounds like something out of fiction. To this day, we still have no idea what happened to Danny during those six days that he was missing. But let me know what you think happened in the comments. As well, man, drop it down below. What do you guys think happened? He was at the top of the mountain six days later unscathed on the opposite side of the country, man. Like they said, memory loss. It, they say aliens abducted him. I mean, you never know. He could have fell through a port or something. I don't know. I'm definitely going to check into that, man. Try to see the reports. See if he, like you said, he recalls some more vague details about it. We definitely got to check that one out. You guys, if you guys made it with me to the end of the video, your true seeker seeking the truth, I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, tell me down below, guys, if you guys liking this new style that I'm trying out, man. Like I said, I'm saving my thoughts until after the video plays. I'm trying to pause way less. If you guys can see over the past couple of videos, I pause way less, man. And um, like I said, I'm just trying to bring you guys the best content I possibly can. I'm trying to grow this community, these seekers. I believe we can do this, man. So. I just need you guys help us by spreading the word, man. If you just subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell, hit that like button, man. You guys are doing me a huge favor. You guys are catch in the next one, man. We're doing daily uploads this month as well. We might even get double on some days. I don't know yet. I'm out. Peace, seekers. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary, creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my um the supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, man, hitting that like button. You guys don't know how much you guys are helping out the channel just by doing those three simple things. You guys are pushing us in the algorithm and we're connecting and find out the people to join our community. Find this video for you guys today. Let's do we do best seekers. Let's seek the truth. All this place is abandoned? What the hell happened that caused them to be abandoned? You guys have any idea why they just like abandoned all those places? There was like amusement parks, freaking movie theaters and stuff like that. That like a natural disaster or something happened that caused them to just be the area and just never reopened it. Something to think about. Claustrophobia. Like I 
I was claustrophobic, man. That was a tight fit. On real stories, man. Give me your <laughs> was that an edit, or was that like some you know large footage, man, of Pepper of Pepper Pig? You guys know recently how man we be seeing these cut these clips, bro, of like how these cartoons and stuff. I'd be having secret messages, man, behind them. Wouldn't surprise me, man, if Peppa Pig was in on it, too. It was just announced um, a couple of days ago how it's been on for 20 years, so you know some stuff went on in the background, man. That's why we got paid attention to our media. Mm. Upgraded throughout time. Saudi Arabia. Everybody age change, but you know what happens in that it's type of work. Ooh, that was an edit. You know what that was. What happened? Have you ever been on a ride, man, and it got stuck? That's something you never want to be. I think that legit probably only happened to me one time when I was going up on a roller coaster. And I kind of, you know, stayed away from that. After that happened, I said, I don't like that. And this ain't going to happen to me again. You know these rides, I mean, a couple of crazy stories about what happened on those rides. That just like, that ain't for me. Tell me down below, man, if you guys are like roller coaster heads and y'all can do that. I can't. It was a family at it too. Crazy fact. Big bodies of water. Jokes might like make you age. Why are they abandoning them, bro? We know why they look like that, man. After what they've been through. You know, probably back then they didn't have a term for it, but we obviously know what they went through now, man. It's just like the things you see over that, or if you partake in what happened over there, it, it's, it changes you. So it's no wonder why they look completely like they look like completely different persons be before and after the before and after shot, man. <laughs> Pitbull is James Charles. What the? That was Cap with Primo. Makeup changes you. Lockdown. 
Thor's job rank is one of the most creepy Marvel um, MCU does, man. You know, I, I, fun fact, I'm an MCU fan, been keeping up with it for a minute, but I think for me, probably had to be the Doctor Strange and Dormammu, and Dormammu scene where he kept, like, it kept happening over and over again. It was like a loop. Hollywood changes you. Detroit from 2009 to 2013 all those look like some important buildings and stuff they just got taken down or just they just didn't even pay attention to it man just let it just break down maybe that was all part of a plan because you know what time you know what neighborhoods those buildings are in that doesn't help anything we digging deep on that one Oh yeah, why they just let it you think it was part of Detroit, Michigan, the town they would try to fix it up, but they just let it left it there to rot. Why? Hmm. damn birds. What the hell was that? I refuse to believe that was birds at the end. That was in Italy, right? I've seen, like, pictures of that. Was it really just, like, was it really full size before and something happened to it that caused it to cry? What the hell? Blowing our reality right open, man. Was that an edit? We're gonna have to check into that one. Cause I know that that's in Italy, right? That's like, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Coliseum? If I'm not mistaken? It's been a minute since I checked that out, but if that's true, that's mind blowing. Tap in with us, you're gonna learn. Idiots? the screw word dark origins revealed the hell they see like fear of body of water I think I'm gonna carry that one You guys know what happened with the with those fires, man. How they can spread. They can literally change everything. I remember, like, and those especially kept, keep happening in California. I remember it kept going viral. Like, California, like, it kept happening over and over again. People, and they actually thought that, like, how somebody was, like, actually starting because it kept happening, like, too frequently. And wonder why California, that dark energy over there, you know, is in California. That's, like, the movie industry, L.A., and stuff like that. So, we don't know why the hell that was happening over there. Something to think about. Meet moving part two. Frog legs? <laughs> Throw it away. Is 
Now, if y'all still eat the meat after we just seen these videos, man, we know the meat by now going around is fake. That's just proof we just seen it now. 4K. And people still eat meat? I don't really see how people can eat octopus and stuff like that. That's just ain't for me, but now that I definitely see that, I ain't definitely trying it. People in those suits, we heard dark stories about the Teletubbies now. I wonder what they went through. Mm. We don't do bugs. I said that in a previous video. I don't do bugs. Parasite is that man involved in front of my eyes. Mm. It's down in the ocean. G memories. Toys R Us. You remember about Toys R Us, man. Those are some fond memories. Then, like, Toys R Us, man, it, like, declared for bankruptcy, like, like, how many times? But, it, like, it keeps going away. It keeps coming back. But I think Toys R Us is something that that should stay. Every kid should experience that. I remember going to Toys R Us as a kid. Looking around like, damn, all these damn toys just for me. And Blockbuster. Actually, I don't remember. I remember seeing Blockbuster a couple of times, but those are some fond memories of places, man. You got you to keep some of them, man. Just, you know, around for the old, just for the memories. We know, like, everything's changing, but it's good. Just, you know, just to keep those places around just for memories. <sighs> Seekers, YouTubers. Supporters, man, that's it for this video for you guys today. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video of uh, today, man. Um, I really appreciate the support. So, guys, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, hit that post notification bell, man. Like I said, I'm greatly, um, really, really appreciating the support you guys are showing in these videos. Like I said, let's continue to grow. Let's continue to get bigger and better. Tell me down below, man. I'm always open to any and all, all forms of criticisms. Just to make the channel better. I'm trying to, you guys, like I said, I'm still on this journey together with you guys, man. We're, long, we're learning and growing and evolving together. So I said I love about YouTube. You guys going to catch you in the next video. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, man, we break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook videos, man. Anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank you guys for the support who's been tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. I really appreciate the support. It allows me to put back into the channel. And, um, yeah, I still we do best seekers. Let's seek the truth. What we got today. This is why you should fear for your life if you buy or sell items on Facebook Marketplace. 56-year-old mm -hmm. Denise Williams of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, wanted to buy a refrigerator for her boyfriend. She found one listed on Facebook Marketplace. The seller was 26-year-old Joshua Gorgon. Denise went to his apartment alone to check out the fridge but never came out. On Monday, she was reported missing by her family, and police were able to track her using her phone and information from a Facebook account. Mm. She was found dead from multiple stab wounds at Joshua's apartment. Joshua was arrested and charged with criminal homicide. When he was interviewed by Cambria County detectives, he admitted to stabbing Williams to death with a kitchen knife following an argument over the cost of the refrigerator. The mystery of Kate Young is... 
That right there, man, is exactly what if you guys are gonna meet up somebody to buy something like online for marketplace or something like that, always make sure it's in a public area. Never meet them at their house or a location of their choosing, man. You have to do it in a public meetup or public setting because you never know what could happen, man. Like you said, they were disputing over the price and look what that turned out. Never go to that to a person's place, man. Especially if you're buying something offline, online? No. It's still very much unexplained. Kate Yup was a YouTuber who would make mukbang videos where she would eat excessive amounts of food. These were not normal videos. Kate was eating aggressively fast, almost like she was being starved or she was forced. Mm. She also wears a blindfold in every video, so her identity is completely unknown. But viewers became seriously concerned when they started to notice warning signs that Kate might be under someone's control. There are indicators that there was somebody else in that room with her while she's eating all of this food. You can hear him breathing in the background of her videos. She's eating so fast that in one video, she actually chips her teeth. And when she shows them to the camera, these are teeth that are rotted. But the most compelling evidence to support that Kate Yup could be a victim of trafficking are the cryptic messages that she's left in the text editing of her videos. Since this all kind of blew up in the media, the channel has gone totally dark and there hasn't been a new video in a year. Barbie has a much creepier yeah, check that than out. I thought. I'm going to show you some theories about Barbie that have been keeping me up at night. And I cover all sorts of creepy and true crime stuff to follow along. In 2010, Barbie released a doll that had a camera on her necklace as well as a video screen on her back. Come again? This doll has since been discontinued, but there's a lot of rumors about what happened to this footage when it was recorded. So people have always theorized that the footage was collected and sold either by Mattel or by someone more nefarious. And it's been mentioned how easy it would have been for hackers to collect and sell all this data. Mm. The FBI even put out a statement about it. Barbie also released and discontinued the Hello doll, which could listen to children and respond with over 8,000 pre-recorded answers. A lot of parents worried that these dolls were potentially recording their children and then selling that data. But this doll also has really concerning reviews. Mm. Like people say that the doll won't take no for an answer. Like if she asked if you wanted to hear a story and then you said no, she would actually push back and then just tell you the story anyways. What? The doll would also ask really chubby. specific and targeted questions about children, like how big their families were and if they had any siblings. Was this doll just collecting market data on children or was it something much weirder? No one could work out much why weirder. this child kept getting sick. So doctors took a look at the cameras that were set up in the room and what they saw gave them chills. Nine days after Garrett Spears was born, he was ad admitted to hospital. Since then, Lacey Spears would care for her son through a myriad of illnesses. No one could figure out why young Gareth kept getting sick. Lacey, the dutiful single mother, would document his illnesses online. She created an online blog where she would chronicle her struggles and document her struggles to find a cure for whatever illness Garrett had. In 2014, Gareth, age 5, was rushed to hospital. Doctors again couldn't quite work out what made him sick, but they were able to treat his symptoms and he made a full recovery. Doctors were gearing up to discharge him. However, within a few short hours, Gareth took a turn for the worst, and without warning, he sadly passed away. The hospital staff were devastated, but very confused as to what had happened. So they did a blood test, and that's where they found something very disturbing. Garrett had deadly levels of sodium in his blood. He had been suffering from sodium poisoning, which meant someone was poisoning him. So when hooked up to certain machines in the hospital, there are cameras. They took a look at those cameras, and they saw what was happening. Oh, his mother, Lacey, had been poisoning him with sea salt. Lacey was arrested. She was diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome by proxy and she was sentenced to 25 years my name's halves and i'm chelsea Simonson crime story for more remember to follow this is some clout people have to be better man when clout comes into the picture they just lose all sense of morality never fails man clout is one of the most dangerous drugs there's out there nowadays yo and shoot gia word in the back 12 times killing him instantly. With her son-in-law's body on the kitchen floor, Cynthia went on with her birthday celebrations, first mm -hmm. going to a local cafe for breakfast, then to a casino, and finally to her favorite coffee shop, where she was brought into questioning by police. And what followed is an interrogation that would make anyone's blood curdle. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Come here, sorry. come here. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna put handcuffs on just for now. Where is it now? Sorry, Dad, I'm sorry, I don't know what's <laughs> This is police body 
cam footage that depicts a 12 year old girl after she just stabbed and killed her nine year old brother. She is seen crying and apologizing to police and her mother repeatedly. This will take place on Friday night in Oklahoma. Just sit there for a second. You don't have the knife on you, right? No, I swear I don't. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't. I don't. It will be nighttime and the one parent will be sleeping upstairs when the 12 year old daughter would stab her nine year old brother repeatedly in the chest. She then would go upstairs to wake up her parent to inform them of what she had just done. I don't know if there's no room and I threw it out the window and it's not in the apartment right here. You threw it where? I threw it out my window upstairs. Right not, not right there. It's the room. It's the other room. It's right behind the apartment. This apartment right here. The young girl will be taken into custody and is currently mm. being held at the Family Center for Juvenile Justice. The hell made me do that? See how we're looking around? Some of this is death row inmate Taylor yeah, Parker, who went to extreme lengths to cover up her lies. She even killed a pregnant woman in order to steal the baby from her womb just to prove she was really pregnant. So a picture here we have Taylor and her boyfriend Wade and what appears to be a baby bump. What, what later is found out is just an actual prosthetic baby bump, mm -hmm. not a real one. She was covering up this entire time, pretending to be pregnant, so that Wade would not leave her. That's now, she name. couldn't have gotten pregnant because she had a hysterectomy several years earlier, but Wade was unaware of this. Mm. Well, that's where Reagan comes into play, because Reagan actually was pregnant around the same time that Taylor said she was pregnant. And she knew Reagan because she had been a photographer at Reagan's wedding. Now, Taylor's perpetrating this lie the entire time. So even she's holding a gender reveal party and going to ultrasound sending fake images to her boyfriend mm -hmm. he never gets to go into the doctor's office she keeps telling him oh sorry it's covid you're not allowed to go back there so he begins to grow a little suspicious of the whole thing especially after when the day she was supposed to be induced his house catches on fire and a bomb threat at the hospital they were supposed to be induced at occurs mm -hmm. and then she becomes three weeks late on her pregnancy that's when Wade's mother pulls him aside and says, you know, I actually think you're onto something. She's probably not pregnant. Wade confronts mm. her once again about the whole thing, and she says, watch, I'm going to get induced at a hospital in Oklahoma, and you will see. So Friday, she sets up an appointment to be induced. So that morning, Wade actually goes to a hog sale because he was supposed to go down to this sale about four hours from their house, come back, drive her to the hospital, and watch the baby be induced. Well... Um, ends up being that he goes there and it was a false. There, she had set this up for him to actually go to this hog hunt so she could go see Reagan and murder her, and she does. Sadly, she goes over to her friend's house, attacks her, stabs her with a scalpel that she had over a hundred times while her little daughter is standing right there. Then she cuts open her stomach and extracts the baby from it and rushes towards the hospital. She gets pulled over for speeding and says, hey, look, I just had this baby. It's unresponsive. Help me, help me. She had actually tucked the umbilical cord into her pants to make it look like the baby was still attached to her. But the hospital staff begins to grow suspect that she refuses to be checked at all, and the baby shows up dead, and they actually heard that there was a baby that was abducted from another murder victim after the mother of Reagan showed up and found her daughter with 100 stab wounds. Sadly, at court, all this web of lies comes out. Reagan and the baby were killed. She was sentenced to murder and sentenced to death in Texas, where she currently sits on death row awaiting execution. So, update on your life. One of the most freaking bizarre cases man we heard, man, and it just goes to prove when a person is lying, man, they spinning those webs, how they would just try to do anything to cover it up. Like she went to the extremes. That's because, like I said, that boyfriend and then boyfriend moms were catching on to hey, like you probably not pregnant, like you're on to something. And look what she did. Lies can be one of the most dangerous, unpredictable people in the world. Seekers. That teacher B's okay. CB didn't know a lot of people that went to school with her are starting to speak out on social media outlets, and the Daily Mail just published an article on Saturday.
So the headline reads, she was a master manipulator. Alexi Trevizo knew she was pregnant and had even picked out the name Alex for her baby boy, but hid it from everyone. So what the students told Daily Mail is that around mid-November, students already started to speculate if she was pregnant or not, which she was denying all the rumors. Even her cheer coach had asked her if she was pregnant, but she said that it was the pill, which is why she gained so much weight. But she obviously looked pregnant. I mean, she was actually pregnant, but they felt that they couldn't keep asking her because it was just gonna make them look wrong as in they were giving her the benefit of the doubt that maybe she was just gaining lots of weight and when the news broke back in january that someone had discarded their baby in the hospital people already started to suspect that it was alexi so the students did explain that after the news had broke out both alex and devon were gone for a couple of weeks which they were able to put two and two together and when they came back alex at one point had the audacity to write a poem called people talk basically addressing all the rumors that were going on about her The reason they also said they couldn't just come out and talk about what was actually happening is because the school was threatening them if they were to talk, they were going to be suspended and not be able to participate in the graduation ceremony. Mm. She is currently out on a $100,000 bail and awaiting trial on September 11th. Oh my god, you People guys, talking about the truth. the biggest story in true crime Can't hide today, it. or it, it probably will be for the next week. Did you guys see that someone confessed to the murder of John Bonet Ramsey? For my younger followers, this is John Bonet Ramsey. She was killed in her home December 27, 1996. Mm. She was a six-year-old little girl. Um, she lived in Boulder, Colorado, and someone came in the middle of the night, it was presumed, and kidnapped her. Now, it has been long speculated that the parents were involved, so they said they woke up and there was a ransom note. They were very well off, and I've heard theories also that the son was involved. He was roughly her age, maybe a couple mm. of years older than her. So, like I said, she was killed on December 26, 1996. Now, on December 27, 1996, this was a huge national story. Now, before the story came became known as widely as it was, the Boulder police received a tip that someone had gotten a phone call from mm. a friend that he hadn't spoken to in years, saying that he was scared. He hurt a little girl in Boulder, Colorado. Now, authorities never looked into this or questioned the guy, but the guy in question was Gary Oliva, and this is a picture of him at the one-year anniversary at the JonBenet Ramsey vigil. This was a picture taken by a private investigator hired by John Ramsey, which was JonBenet's father. Um, He gave them this information, and they never looked into it further. So, again, like all my videos, what is going on with the justice system in this country? So they never looked into it, never questioned this guy, but four years later, in 2000, this guy was arrested with, uh, relating to CSA, I can't really say it on TikTok, but you get the idea. He was arrested in 2000, at which point he wrote more letters, confession letters, to this friend that lived in California. Mm. Okay, so fast forward to 2016, this guy gets arrested yet again. And cops find pictures of Jean Monnet on his phone. And the CSA charges that he was being arrested for multiple times. And the multiple tips from the sky that he had called and said, I'm scared. I hurt this girl. Were never looked into. What? what? Again? So they were going to be talking about a murder How? and a serial wow, rapist system. by the name of Mr. Cruel. A few decades ago, was Australia's most wanted and was also known as the boogeyman of Australia. Mm. So according to various sketches, this is what Mr. Cruel looked like. And between 1987 and 1991, he broke into three homes of three Australian parents, and then he would bound the parents and take their daughters. On the morning of August 22nd, 1987, a masked man broke into a quiet home in the suburbs in Melbourne, Australia. He forced both parents onto their stomachs and then bound them. And then he locked them in a closet as he proceeded to rape their 11-year-old daughter. He cut the phone lines and then he left after assaulting the daughter. Mm. When the police first heard about this case, they were trying to figure out what happened and asked the parents. The parents then said that the attacker came into their house with a gun and a knife and tied them in knots which can only be known by sailors. So this gave the police a hint as to who he could be. But because he was wearing a mask, he was unable to be identified. The little girl who was attacked then told the police that he had made a phone call and told the person on the phone call to move their children and also called him a bozo. 
But when the police looked into it, they found no record of any phone call. This was just something that Mr. Cool did to throw the police off his case. He was doing this to purposely confuse investigators. And that's when he went for his second victim, Sharon Wills, who was 10 years old. Just days after Christmas in 1988, John Wills, his wife, and their four daughters were asleep. Mm. And this house was a couple of miles away from where the first crime took place. Wearing dark blue overalls and a dark ski mask, Mr. Cruel came back. He held a gun to the father's head and just like the previous crime, rolled the parents onto the stomachs and bound them and gagged them. He knew Sharon Will's name and woke her up. He then blindfolded her, gagged her and took her away and fled the house with some of her clothing the next morning. By the time the father got help, it was too late. Mr. Cruel was gone and so was Sharon Will's. But 18 hours later, a woman stumbled upon her. She was dressed in a green garbage bag, standing on the street a quarter after midnight. Because she was blindfolded throughout the assault, she couldn't give much information to the police. But Mr. Cruel made sure to wash her body and cut her fingernails and floss her teeth, so there was no forensic evidence available. He then told her that he was the boogeyman. But this was just the beginning of Mr. Cruel's attacks. He then proceeded to attack another girl and murder and attack one more. Hmm. Running out of time, so I'm going to have to make a part two, but make sure you check it out. This is one of the most high-profile pedophiles in Hollywood, Jeffrey Jones. You might recognize Jeffrey from a number of movies he's been in, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Hunt for Red October, and Beetlejuice. It's highly ironic to me that in a lot of the movies he was in, Jeffrey Jones played the villain. And he ended up being one in real life. Mirror. So after his career flourished in the late 80s and 90s, let's fast forward to 2002. That year, Jeffrey was arrested for the possession of CP, if you know what I'm talking about. And he was accused by a 17-year-old boy of soliciting him to take nude photos. These charges get even more disturbing when you realize that the young boy who accused Jeffrey of soliciting him to take nude photographs was 14 when the charges were originally brought up and the accusations were made. Jeffrey pleaded no contest to the solicitation. He openly admitted that he had done this horrible thing. But once again, because of legal loopholes, because he admitted to this and pled no contest, that meant that the other CB charges were completely dropped. No way. And what happened to Jeffrey after all this? Well, he got five years probation. What the f- he also had to go through counseling and register as a sex offender. And yes, if you're wondering, to this day, he is still registered as a sex offender. You can find the records of all of this online. Mm. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender throughout his life. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender for the rest of his life, and he would end up being arrested twice for failing to update his sex offender registration. And in 2006, when working on the set of the movie Who's Your Caddy? The community of Aiken, South Carolina, where the film was being filmed, complained to the government and complained that a sex offender was on set. This was due to the fact that families had been invited to visit the set with their children, and they had no idea that there was a predator lurking amongst the crew. To To this day, a lot of people don't know what this guy has done, and even Justin Bieber posted a photo with him a couple years back, and Mm. a lot of people were obviously a little mad about that. And I think it's important to realize that these people are everywhere. They're your friends, your family, your neighbors. They're even celebrities. And at the end of the day, even the people that you look up to and have seen a million times on the silver screen could be the worst people you've ever met in real life. If you like these types of stories, give me a follow or listen to my wife and I's podcast, Murder in America. Please join our page. Like you said, man, it's always, it seems like it's always somebody in Hollywood or famous in that room that has that, that problem, man. Y'all know the beef that's going on with freaking Jake and Kendrick Lamar right now. You know what, what Kendrick said? I've been dropping dishes and about hitting about certain stuff. It's like it's it's crazy. It's a rampant problem in Hollywood, man. Or when it, it involves famous people, they never. We don't know if it's true or not. It's not confirmed, but it's just crazy how it's always like someone in that room or something like that. That's just something to think about. I know if Amanda was alive, she'd be a Patreon member. Thank God for true crime. What would? It- Here's the thing. I enjoy listening to some true crime podcasts. I like when they're mysteries and there's like an investigation involved. I honestly like it when a journalist does it and they're in tandem with the family and the family knows about it, so they're kind of working on it together. Like, there's a lot of good examples. There's someone knows something. Um, uh, uh, crime junkie, although not a great name. 
my favorite podcast of all time is um, the last podcast on the left. They don't do all true crime. They do a bunch of other stuff, too. But, like, when they do true crime, they're really good at, like, demystifying, like, these serial killers. Like, oh, they did And they're like, no, they're losers. So I really appreciate that. Ooh. But anyway, someone recommended My Favorite Murder, and I listened to an episode. And I was like, no. First of all, the first half was just, like, 40 minutes of them doing bits between them. And I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to be a true crime podcast, don't you do research and stuff? They did very little research, like, they infantilized, like, the victims. Like, it, it, it was just really uncomfortable to listen to. So I checked their Instagram, and I'm like, how popular are these guys? And they have a lot, a lot of followers. Mm. And they either posted or reposted a picture. I don't think it was them specifically, but um, of someone doing a true crime party. And in my head, I'm like, no, there's no way they're doing, like, actual victims of crimes. Like, they... They would, they're probably doing, like, movie things or, like, Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, it was actual cases what? of actual people, and they came dressed up. And one of them was dressed up as a pageant queen, a pa- like a toddlers and tiaras kind of person. Like, mm. the full pageant, like, the crown and everything. Because she was impersonating a girl named JonBenet Ramsey, who uh, was murdered in 1997, who was six. And they, like, reposted it. Like, at what point of delusion are you doing that? Like, that is, that's genuinely disgusting. And they're really popular. Guys, again, I would just be, like, considerate of your consumption. Like, there are a lot of, like, true crime podcasts that, like, work very closely with victims and, like, raise a lot of money. Like, uh, Crime Junkie, like, started a project where they actually um identified two unidentified people um because they raised enough donations to get the dna testing for them which was like oh it was amazing it was like oh okay you're doing something not doing bits and not dressing as like a child victim for a party and last podcast on the left is a lot of like alien episodes and bigfoot episodes those are my favorite that's actually insane Truly, that's one of the first time I heard about it. A true calm party where they dress up as the... Who even thought of that idea? Who even thought, hey, let's have a true calm party and we dress up as the, as the victims? Knowing what they went through, y'all know the story, the background behind it. And y'all throwing a party, dressing up as them. Like, they don't think how that can like, affect the family members and stuff stuff like that. Like, what happens if somebody found out, I guess, in their family, man, that they're having a party and they're dressing up as a victim? That's not funny. That's not even a great idea, a fun idea. Who the hell even thought that up, man? People nowadays, bro. I'm trying to tell you, they don't think before they act, before they do things like this, man. It's crazy. The things people would do, man. As a form of entertainment, we got to be better. Everybody, man. All around. You guys, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, guys. Like I said, if you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell, hit that like button, man. We're growing. I greatly appreciate the support, man. Like I said, I know we can grow our community to seek us into something special. I just need you guys' help to do to follow those three simple steps, man. We're golden. Like I said, man, we've been daily uploading, man, every single day, man. I'm planning to do the same thing um, this month. Hopefully, I want you guys to stick with me through the journey. Like I said, I've been trying to upgrade the channels. Like I said, tell me also down below if you guys like my new reacting style, man. As you guys can see, I'm really, I'm pausing way less. I'm trying to limit the two or three pauses maybe throughout like the whole video and just save my thoughts until after and kind of speak on it. I'll really only pause like through the video if it's like really important. If it's something I really have to get off my chest. But tell me if you guys like this new style. I'm trying to bring the best entertainment for you guys also, man. Like I said, send me videos you guys want to react to. If you guys, I know y'all been saying y'all don't want to see the same thing. So if you guys can send me the videos, that's why I say follow me on my social medias because you guys send me the videos. I can put them, I can like compile the clips into the next video. So I need you guys to follow my social medias as well. I'm out. Peace, secrets.